Mir Taki Mir Sahibs. I thought, you know what? Since I was going to speak about legacy, why not get a poem of his that really reflects this? Allah. Those of you that don't know Mir Taki Mir Sahib. So, first of all, the one I put up there, that's in Urdu. That Kahe Kya Jo Puche Koi Ham Semir Jahame Tumayte Kya Karchale. What is it that we should say, Mir, if we are asked? That you came into this world. What is it that you left behind? Allah. And he means by what is it that you left behind here, not as in in a sarcastic way to say, well, you know, why are you doing something? In fact, it's the opposite. He means here that what legacy have you left behind? And it's one of, you know, Mir Taki Mir Sahib. Those of those that do not know Mir Taki Mir. Allah, I mean, <laughs> is your existence even worthwhile? This is an existential question. Mir Taki Mir is the dawn of of soulful poetry from classic India. He is the f one of the founding fathers, if you like, or the key contributors to the Urdu language. He's been termed, in fact, his title is Khudai Sukhan, which means the god of Urdu, of, of speech and expression in Urdu. And, and you think, well, wow, you know, why would they give? such a name and it's interesting because cultures some cultures they didn't they used words in in certain ways where they could distinguish and it's interesting that i suppose today the same culture would probably be much more sensitive uh the same indo pak kind of culture today wouldn't be as um maybe, you know, broad-hearted towards certain words like this. But Mir Taki Mir Sahib is from, I believe he was born in 1723 or something like that. And he lives right through to 1810. He passes away in 1810. And this is the era in which when he's passing away, Urdu is actually becoming formulated as a language as something official i believe it's around in that last decade when he passes away it's the first time an urdu translation of the quran has been put together and urdu has then been deemed the official language of the royal courts so and it's shaped it's kind of founding fathers are people like mir taqimir legend and these people were no short of uh scholars in an islamic sense like they would have had all the islamic learning um and much more than your average islamic scholar today so the the ones today that you have the the, the kind of normal islamic scholars that go through a seminary a madrasa that's exactly what these people would have been through they would have studied arabic studied uh, urdu obviously farsi studied history studied fiqh studied the quran studied you know tafsir studied all these kind of things and possibly because of their classical nature much more and his father was a maulana as well mir taqi mir sahib his father was a maulana and he has this um and it was a, uh, somebody that was a key proponent of the message of love especially sufi love and his father was and 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 hence mir kind of follows along that way he's like a sufic kind of poet um very courageous still in his ways and you know just deemed the greatest urdu poet that ever lived Allah, what a seriously, that is something though. That is, you, you have to recognize that. I mean, people like uh, everybody has to salute Mir Taqi Mir. And his poems have a, I find in them a kind of like a feminine soul. 
They uh, they are very soulful. I'll definitely describe them as that. And they also kind of... Um, they are sensual in a way, and they they have a um, a delicacy about them that they're delicate. It's 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 amazing. I, I and they're not necessarily awkward. And what Mir did is he introduced a lot of concepts into Urdu poetry. So each era has poetry has a um it has certain uh kind of motifs and certain themes that the poets run by so for example the ancient arabs had this theme of the atlal the ruins that you always begin by you have passed so this was the, the this is the scene <laughs> you know in ancient arabic poetry this is how a poem begins the scene begins with a poet has passed by the ruins of a former um, town or an abode, and this has triggered for him memoirs, and and he starts to reminisce. Often the ruins may be the ruins of uh, someone he loved, they, but they don't have to be. Sometimes these ruins could just trigger memories which then trigger his memories of love and and then he'll go into the the theme will change from the ruins it will change to things like uh, his bravery or his, him going to war or him you know womanizing and doing all of that and his kind of own escapades and expeditions and so that's in classical arabic poetry that changes obviously later on so in urdu poetry you have certain uh, themes like when they will um, speak of beauty, they use, for example, similes with certain animals, as in the gazelle is a key one, the, the eyes of a gazelle and a woman, her eyes, and things like this. These were introduced, a lot of these themes were that are commonplace today. Um, I don't know if people are still very familiar with them, but they're very common in Urdu poetry were introduced by the likes of Mir. Like he actually introduced these themes. So prior to him, people weren't using them as much in that way. He brought in a lot of these similes and, and he brought them from Persian and other languages. And, and then this is why he's deemed the Don he is. And it, it's enough to say that um, Ghalib says about him, that Rechtik, he says about himself, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ghalib is one of the see Ghalib's poetry is I, I would define it as more kind of masculine. And I would define it as even though he speaks about women and but a lot about alcohol and a lot about just life and melancholy and, and he speaks about many wonderful things as well. But but on purpose he makes it difficult. Like he makes the words very awkward and and like he'll put words in there that you have to try to figure out what what does this word mean <laughs> you know he's, he's letting basically you know this guy is <laughs> is sophisticated and educated and uh a cha-cha <laughs> what uh, i wonder what that word means so and he puts a lot of farsi in there and it doesn't it's it is difficult I think Ghalib's poetry for many people today would be more difficult than Mir Taki Mir's poetry. Even though Ghalib is like, you know, much, he's late. In fact, Ghalib meets Mir at a very young age. So Ghalib must have been a kid. And he allegedly meets Mir Taki Mir because Mir lives an incredibly long life, passes away in his 90s. So he meets him when he's in his old age and Ghalib is just a kid. So Ghalib doesn't rate anyone he's at the height you know at the height of arrogance when it comes to poetry and oh even his name Ghalib you know the the, the one who overcomes <laughs> and 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 it, I, it's actually taken from Asadullah al Ghalib that the lion of God that overcomes look at that huh what his and he nobody could ever be rated by and occasionally maybe whilst you know he's had a bit to drink he might kind of praise someone occasionally but 
it's difficult. And he says in his poem, I mean, imagine praising someone in his poetry, which he wants to eternalize. He says, He says that, Ghalib, you're not the only Don of Urtu. Of Rechta was a former name for Urtu. It says, <laughs> He says that it has been said. Now look how he's saying it. Even to be fair, look, it's big of him to acknowledge it, but even when he does, it's with a bit of arrogance. It's with a hint of arrogance. He says, you know, it's been said that in the previous generations, there was someone called Mir as well. <laughs> oh, you got to love him, huh? You got to love him. But yeah, I thought, let me share this with you guys. Because um, this is just epic. You know, we can't... Uh, or shall I take a question or two and then come back to to this? No, let's, let's just... Let's deal with it right now. This is one of Mir Taki Mir's poem that you have to familiarize yourself with. Fakirana ay sada kar chale. Mia khush raho ham dua kar chale. Allah. Now check this out. Fakirana ay. That we came as like people who are not interested in this world. A fakir is like... It's used in the sense to mean a poor person, but in Urdu it's used more for people that are kind of devout as well and they don't want anything of this world. Usually they have a, they are colored by a religious flavor and devoutness. So they just, you know, they're disinterested in, in this world, what the world has to offer. So he says, Fakirana ay, sadakar chale. That they came like this and they just, left with an echo and what was that echo that mia khush raho hum dua kar chale that be happy that may you always be happy we leave with a dua for you allah now that is really mir's flavor his love shines through honestly this is why i love mir um i love many of the poets but he has this very this kind of this caring nature about him that comes right through. But I mean, he he at times is very clear as well. <laughs> you know, he's very uh, pro he can be provocative in his poems as well. You know, he's not like uh, he has a poem where he says, "Chor ke sab dino imam mir ham jiske vaste." That he says mir that those uh, do I have it here somewhere? He, he says that mir, those for who, or, th or that person for whom we left our deen and iman. <laughs> we left our faith and everything. That chor ke sab deen o iman, mir jiske vaste. Ham huye kafir to wo kafir musalman ho gaya. <laughs> he says, you know, that person over whom we became a kafir. That kafir ended up becoming a Muslim. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, teasing, uh, this one. He, he does, he does a, uh, you know, the provocative thing. But coming back to this poem. Jo tuj bin jine ko kehte te hum, so is ahd ko ab wafa kar chale. Hi, 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 hi. He says that we had, you know, that we had pledged that we will live on after you. He says, so we finally fulfilled our vow, that we kind of saw to it. Bahat arzu thi gali ki teri, so yaan se lahu mein naha kar chale. Allah. He says that, you know, we, we had so much of a desire to come through by your alleyway, to come past your home, and, and considering, look, you've got to understand the context. That's a very dangerous thing to do because it's exposing the love and it's putting yourself in danger because if people think that, oh, um, you know, you've got something going on and now you are passing by that street and you could be in a lot of trouble. 
And that's what he's embracing. He's saying, Bahut arzu thi gali ki teri. That we had such a desire, so we came. And and he's saying that we came and what happened? Obviously a disaster. <laughs> he's been, and he's saying, so, ya, so ya se lahu mein naha kar chai. That we've, so we leave here bathed in blood. And dikhai diye yun ke be khud kiya. Allah. दिखाई दिए यूं कि बेखुद किया हमें आप से भी जुदा कर चले दिस लाइन ऑफ मीर तकी मीर इट इज ऑनेस्टली इट इज काइंड ऑफ सोल रैप्चरिंग दिस दैट दिखाई दिए यूं कि बेखुद किया नाउ यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट ही सेइंग एंड ही सेइंग थिंग्स ही इज यूजिंग लैंग्वेज दैट कैन मीन a multiplicity of things that that you appeared to me in such a way that you made me lose myself dikhai di diye yun ke be khud kiya hame aap se bhi juda kar chale now this you see even the second line and then i'll come back to another layer of understanding with this that y- you see you, you you made me lose myself dikhai diye yun ke be khud kiya hame aap se bhi na aap in our, in urdu can mean you but it can also mean the self you see hame aap se bhi juda kar chale now one understanding is that you appeared like at a superficial level or let's say that not superficial but the simplest of understandings is that oh i saw you and i was so i lost my senses and then you separated from me and you know so one you made me lose my sense and then you gave me this separation he's he's lamenting the other is and a slightly more developed is hame aap se bhi juda kar chale that you ripped myself from me and separated it from me you understand and then you give this a greater level of complexity that this is about the divine you see that when he finally you saw the symbols the signs the ayat manifesting that dikhai diye yun ke be khud kiya that it became as it became realized the self was lost annihilated ego death hame aap se bhi juda kar chale that in it i lost my sense of self but i found my soul this is honestly such a profound poem the, this dikhai diye yun ke be khud kiya hame aap se bhi juda kar chale jab hi sajda karte hi karte gayi hak e bandagi hum ada kar chale la he says the forehead continued to prostrate and prostrate we fulfill the rites of rituals as well you know it's and this could be understood in many ways as well parastash ki yahan tak ke e but tujhe now this is here he's speaking once again it could be understood in many ways he's saying i adored you and loved you so much this is what he's saying e but now but is an idol but this was also used in many ways to refer to especially in urdu in classical urdu uh, to beautiful women they were referred to as but so he says that to you to that extent nazar mein sabun ki khuda kar chale allah he says to that extent that in the eyes of many they considered you a, a deity and in that there's a whole philosophy to unpack that how humans have fallen into idolatry and maybe the thing behind it was this intention of admiration for something you see and and it developed into something that 
it became idolatry. That, that that's one complex layer to, to the poem. But in it, he uses a classical. You see, this is classical Urdu. So the word here, sabun, isn't used today in Urdu. Uh, today they would say sabi, yeah, sab, but sabun, nazar me sabun ki khuda kar chale. This is obviously Mir Taki Mir Sahib's. His Urdu was obviously back then. Some of it has changed since then. So certain words you read, um, he has his Sirhane uh, Mir ke. What is it? Sirhane Mir ke koi na bolo. Abhi tuk so gaya rote rote. Abhi tuk rote rote so gaya hai. Yeah, that's sorry. It's something. It's. Abhi tuk rote rote so gaya hai. So in that as well, he uses tuk is a uh, it's no longer used in people wouldn't understand it today, but it meant in Urdu it meant uh, just now like it's been a brief while zara like abhi tuk abhi zara pehle like that abhi tuk rote rote so gaya hai that he just for a while just only fell asleep. Sarhane mir ke koi na bol. And sarhane is another, it means the pillow. Um, people don't use it as much in Urdu now, they use takia, but really sarhane comes from classical Urdu in that sense and Farsi to mean a pillow. We actually, many people use it in, uh, in other dialects. So in our actual language, which uh, and in other parts of Punjabi as well, I'm pretty sure they still use sarhana to mean a pillow. So anyway, I thought I'll introduce that. Can't really go without the legends. People, what is going on? You see, I get carried away when I start speaking about poetry. This is... Um... Right, this is... Marie, <laughs> shukran, shukran. Mufti ki marda, mufti ji marda la. Kaha yaar, kaha. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, hum kaha maar sakte hai. <laughs> Khud mare hoi hai. This is the... <laughs> uh, but I do, I implore all of you to explore uh, poetry, explore Urdu. If you do understand Urdu, I think you should definitely and and use a you know there's a really epic website called Rechta, R E K H T A. I think it's dot org or I, I don't know what it is. But if you type it on Google, it'll come up, and it's an epic website. They have an app, and they give you new poems every day, and you can even check the words and they give you a dictionary and they give you a brief biography and the collections it's it's epic i definitely recommend it 